Hi everybody, perfect competition, a theoretical extreme, we're not trying to say it's a realistic market structure, but very important to assess the efficiency of real world market structures as a benchmark here. So therefore it's very important that we understand this really well and we understand the conclusions we get at the end. Let's understand this market structure by looking at characteristics first, we'll then go to how firms behave on diagrams, we'll then evaluate using efficiency at the end. So what are the characteristics? of a perfectly competitive market structure. Well, there are many buyers and sellers, in truth, infinite buyers and sellers, very, very intense, extreme competition here. Each firm is selling homogenous goods and services. That means identical goods and services. And for that reason, firms are price takers. They have no ability to set their own prices. If a new firm enters the market, they have to charge the price that's being charged by all other firms in the market. They take the price from the market here. They can't set their price. If they try and raise the price above the market price, they're gonna lose all their demand, no customers at all. If they reduce their price, what a silly thing to do. They're gonna lose revenue and lose profit without gaining anything in the process. So firms are price takers, taking the price from the market. There are no barriers to entry and exit. So any firm that wants to enter or exit the market can do so freely without any cost whatsoever. There is perfect information of market conditions. What does that mean for consumers? It means consumers know about prices and quality in the market. And for producers, they know about prices, they know about technology and costs in the market, very important. We also assume that firms are profit maximizers, meaning firms will produce where MC is equal to MR. Let's go straight to the long run equilibrium in perfect competition. The long run in perfect competition is defined as when normal profit is being made. Any profit outside of normal profit is a short run equilibrium in perfect competition. Normal profit is long run equilibrium. There is no tendency for the market to change there. And it looks something like this. Right, so we see that there is a market on the left, the firm on the right, the firm is taking the price from the market, and at quantity Q2, there is normal profit being made. Right, we don't understand this at all right now. What we need to understand is how supernormal profit and subnormal profit cannot last in the long run. Why are they only short run equilibrium? And therefore, why do we end up here in the long run? Very interesting how firms behave. Let's consider that now. Let's start by understanding how supernormal profit is only a short run equilibrium, not a long run equilibrium in perfect competition. Remember, whenever we draw these perfect competition diagrams, we have to draw the market on the left and the firm on the right because these firms are price takers. So we have to show where these guys are getting the price from. So let's start by drawing the market. We're gonna have supply and demand. Where the two meet, we have an equilibrium price and quantity. Let's call it P1 and Q1. Firms are price takers, so we're going to take that price of P1 across and that price is going to be the average revenue curve, the marginal revenue curve and the demand curve for this individual firm, absolutely. Now we have to show super normal profit. To show that, we know that average cost is going to be below average revenue. Average revenue is going to be higher than average cost and that's how we're going to show super normal profit. So if we draw um, average cost quite far below the average revenue curve like that. Marginal cost cuts average cost at its lowest point, so let's put that on next. Lovely, great. So the crucial thing, we have to get average cost drawn correctly, in this case below AR. This firm is a profit maximizer, so they're gonna produce where MC is equal to MR. So we have to go there to get a profit maximization quantity. Let's call that quantity Q2. And at that quantity, it should be clear to see the super normal profit. We need to compare average revenue and average cost. Well, average revenue is up here at the red dot. Average cost is down here. Average revenue is greater than average cost. The vertical difference there is the unit super normal profit. Multiply that by quantity Q2. So we take this point across, let's call it C1. We're left with a lovely box. If we shade that box in, that box represents the total area of super normal profit being made by the firm. So there is the total super normal profit. But as we've said, this is only a short run position for firms in perfect competition. This is not gonna last in the long run. And why? Because of two crucial characteristics. This profit is gonna attract new firms into the market. New firms are gonna think, look at all these wonderful, juicy, super normal profits. I want a piece of that pie. 
and they can enter. Why can they enter? Because there are no barriers to entry and because there is perfect information and market conditions. That's why they can enter the market. As they enter the market, what happens? Supply is going to shift to the right. As supply shifts to the right, the price is going to fall and that's going to keep happening until there is no more incentive to enter the market, i.e. until all these supernormal profits are taken away and normal profit is left at the end. That's the theory, very simple to understand that logic, the dynamics of competition. But we don't draw it in that order. If we draw it in that order, things can easily go wrong. So the best way to draw this long run adjustment is to go backwards. We know from the diagram I showed you before that the long run position is going to be down here, right? The long run position is going to be there with quantity produced right here. You can just learn it as the minimum point of average cost. That's going to be our long run quantity there. So we need to start backwards. Let's put our revenue curves on first. So our new revenue curves are going to be here, aren't they? They're going to be here at that price. So we'll call that AR2, MR2 and D2. That's going to be a lower price of P2 and that lower price would have come from the market here. It would have come from there. And how would it have come from there? Supply would have shifted right to cut demand here. So our new supply curve has got to be parallel and it's got to cut demand there. Brilliant. Now we just have to add on our quantities. So there's our quantity in the market, Q1 to Q3. And our profit max position for the firm now is over here. And we are ending up at a long run position of Q4. And at that position of Q4, we can see that normal profit is left. So new firms enter the market, the price will fall, and this process will keep happening until there is no more super normal profit left, only normal profit remains. That's how super normal profit is only a short run equilibrium. It doesn't last in the long run. We have to get to normal profit in the long run because there is tendency for new firms to enter until the super normal profit is taken away. What about for sub normal profit? Let's go the same way. So firms the price takers, we have to draw the market on the left. So we're going to draw supply and demand. Where the two meet, we have an equilibrium price and quantity. Firms are price takers. So we're going to take that price across. That's going to be the revenue curves for this firm of AR1, MR1, and D1. But now a loss is going to be made, a subnormal profit. So average cost has to be drawn above average revenue to look something like that. That will be lovely. Marginal cost has to cut average cost at its lowest point. So let's do that next. Something like that is great. This firm is a profit maximizer. So let's get that quantity producing where MC is equal to MR. So we'll call that quantity here Q2. And at quantity Q2, we need to get our subnormal profit now. What do we do? We have to compare average revenue and average cost. Well, average revenue is at the red dot here. Average cost is much higher. So if we go up here, average cost is way up there. That is the unit loss. Average cost higher than average revenue. That's the unit loss. If we take that point across and call it C1, multiplying that unit loss by all of the units being produced and sold, we get the total loss being made by firms. We'll call that the subnormal profit. That box represents the area of subnormal profit being made, the loss, total loss. That's the short run position, but this will not last in the long run. Let's look at the theory first. Why won't this last? Because firms will be incentivized to leave the market and to produce their opportunity cost instead. Why would you continue if you're making a loss, right? So go and produce your opportunity cost and make profits. That's the idea. Why can they leave the market? Well, because there are no barriers to exit. So it's free, it's costless for them to leave the market. As they leave the market, supply is going to shift left. The price is going to be driven up in the market and that's going to keep happening until there is no more incentive to leave, i.e. until there is normal profit left. That's the theory. How do we draw the diagram? Not in that order because it's difficult to draw the diagram correct in that order. Draw it backwards. We know the long run position is going to be there so we can draw our revenue curves first again. Let's draw our revenue curves first and that's going to be at the higher price. So we'll call that AR2 equals MR2 equals D2. So we know they're going to be our revenue curves. That's because the price is going to be higher. Let's call it P2. We know that the price would have come from the market. So let's take it to the market there. And we know that that price would have been driven up because supply would have shifted left, in which case it must have cut demand there. So we're going to draw our new supply curve shifting left parallel. So we have to draw it to look something like that. 
And now we just need to add on our quantities. So quantity of Q3 in the market and the profit max quantity here at Q4. And that is going to show, guys, that at quantity Q4 at profit max here, normal profit is being made. That's the process, simple stuff. And that's how to get the diagram nailed every single time. So we can clearly see why the long run position for firms in perfect competition is going to be over here. It's very clear now to understand the diagram I had on before. Let's now look, analyze and evaluate perfect competition using efficiency. Well, let's focus on allocative efficiency, knowing that here at Q2 is our long run equilibrium position. Is that quantity being produced by perfectly competitive firms allocatively efficient? Well, we need to see whether price is equal to marginal cost. Well, there's our price over here. There's price and it is equal to marginal cost at quantity Q2. Absolutely. Price is equal to marginal cost. So allocative efficiency is being achieved. What does that mean? It means that resources are perfectly following consumer demand. Very, very important. It means that prices are low, consumer surplus is high, quantity is high, choice is high. Consumers are benefiting from resources following their demand in the exact way that they desire them to. Is there productive efficiency? Well, at quantity Q2, is the firm operating at the lowest point on their average cost curve? Well, quite clearly, yes, they are, aren't they? And that means full exploitation of any economies of scale that there might be in this market. So yes, productive efficiency is being attained. Is there X efficiency? Is this firm producing on their average cost curve? Well, by definition, if they're productively efficient, they must be X efficient as well, minimizing waste, minimizing cost. So we can see here that both allocative and productive are occurring, but also, of course, X efficiency is occurring. That means all the three static efficiencies are occurring in perfect competition. And all of them have to be achieved because of the nature of competition, such intense competition. If firms deviate away from these efficiencies, they are not going to survive in the market. They have to be statically efficient because of the nature of competition. But what's clear to see is that in the long run, there is no super normal profit. And therefore, these firms cannot be dynamically efficient. They don't have the profit in the long run to reinvest back into the company. And therefore, consumers may not see brand new innovative products over time, new technologies. Um, producers will not be able to lower their costs through newer technologies over time. So we see uh, the market not really progressing forward through innovation because of a lack of dynamic efficiency. So statically efficient, but not dynamically efficient. That covers perfect competition, guys. This is a quite simple conclusion. There is a video later in this playlist where we discuss competitive markets in far more detail. It's very important you watch that video to elaborate on everything we've learned here. So make sure you watch that as that video comes in this playlist. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next video.